Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask Twill. I've been asked this question so many times that I figured I might as well just go ahead and get it out of the way. Of course the question is, how do I make a screencast? And more specifically, how do you make a screencast and put your camera on the desktop? Well I'm going to walk you through how to do that right now. Alright, if you'll notice here, this is my desktop. This is going to get really complicated really fast. The way that I do it, I use a program called GTK Record My Desktop. So I'll go ahead and open that. You see here by default it shows you a preview of your screen. Now you can select just some portion of the screen or leave it alone and it'll do the whole screen. If you have a microphone attached to your system you can check mark this and leave the sound quality turned up. You have to make sure that you have the right microphone selected. So if you go into your sound preferences, select your input tab, and select the correct microphone. You see I've got my blue snowball microphone here. I could use the, the microphone on my camera. I would really rather not. It's got some, uh, some whiny issues to it that I don't care for. So I'll go ahead and close out of that now. You can come in here and check the advanced settings. You see it's using a working directory. It's going to do 15 frames per second, which is just fine by me. A lot of people say to encode on the fly to save time. I've never had any luck with that, so I'm not going to recommend it. It takes a lot more processing power, and even though I'm on a really powerful system, it doesn't work well for me. Under sound, leave it default. I believe on Ubuntu it was actually a lowercase default and that didn't work, so I had to change it to uppercase. Basically, if it doesn't work one way, try it the other way. You can actually put the sound device in there, but default works just fine. I changed the frequency up from 22,000 to 44,000 because the microphone I've got supports that. And under miscellaneous, you've got a ton of options here. You can tell it to follow the mouse if you do smaller than the full screen area. You can outline your capture area on the screen so you know exactly what you're going to be capturing so you don't leave that area. And you can tell it to reset between captures if you want to do just a small area on one capture and then reset it the next time. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select just an area of the screen by clicking and dragging. You see it put a little box on the screen there. And I'm going to tell it to save that as a file on the desktop. We'll call it just add capture.ogv. It, it automatically does an OGV format. So we'll hit save. It's not actually going to save anything yet. Uh, in some versions you can select the window. I've noticed in Ubuntu 10.04 it's not working at the moment. Hopefully that's a bug. I'm going to go check to see if there are any bug reports on it right after this. But basically that's all there is to it. Once you get ready you go ahead and tell it to record. In fact instead of doing just part of the screen let's do all of it. There we go. Whole screen is now selected. It would have been by default but it is now. So I'll go ahead and hit record. And now I'm recording whatever I do. So I'll open up this directory, I can move it around, I'll close it. And just to make things easier, let's go ahead and open one of these webcam programs. I've got Cheese, that's a good default, works very nicely. There we go, I'm on my webcam now and on the camera at the same time, I've done this before. Uh, or you can use GUVC View. This program actually gives me a little better performance than Cheese. If you'll notice in here, it's got a ton of options that you can configure. I haven't had much luck working straight from GUVC View into Caden Live. But as far as capturing it this way, it's very close. It's, it's a little bit less laggy than using cheese. We'll go ahead and quit that. But that's it. Let's go ahead and stop this capture and we'll do something with it. All right, and as you see, that went ahead and created an OGV file for us. Now the problem that I've had with OGV files is CadenLive doesn't like to work with them. Let's give you an example. If I open up CadenLive and I drag this OGV into it, you will notice the clip monitor is white. Now that should have video there. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. That's easily remedied. It takes a little bit of, of code from the terminal. We'll go to our desktop, and then we'll run this command. I'll put this command in the show notes so you can have it for yourself. But it's, uh, it's mencoder, the file name, the video codec you want to encode to, the audio codec you want to use, some options, and what you want it to be called when you're done. So hit that, let it run, and there you have it. We are done. We've re-encoded the video to an AVI file. So let's close that and reopen Caden Live. Just to make life easier, we'll scoot this over. Okay, so we'll drag our output file into Caden Live. There you go, you've got your preview. We'll open our ask twill directory because I've got another file that I want to put in there with it. So now I've got my output video and my outro. So I'll go ahead and drag this one into the timeline. You'll see it's about a minute long. And I can either put it in the second timeline just in case I want to, to overlay something. I could overlay this outro over top of it using Caden Live's compositing feature. Just imagine, if you will, that this is actually a webcam capture or a high definition camcorder capture, whatever you want to capture. So I've put this over top of it. You'll notice it takes up the entire screen. 
If I select this little cog, go to resize to 50%, and then drag it wherever I want it, we'll put it in the bottom corner here, just to get it out of the way. During the time that it is composited, if I hit play now, there's my desktop, and this would be my webcam that had just popped up, which has got sound, so I'm gonna mute that for now. But there you go, that was my, my webcam on top of the, of the screen. And if I had captured it live like this did, you'll see I've actually got my webcam on cheese. And actually, it looks like the delay that I was having might have been taken care of with an update. But anyway, we'll go ahead and stop that now. If I wanted to take this video that I'd made, this screencast that I'd made, which has my camera in it, and, and make it into a video, I hit render. I choose the type that I want to use, whether it be uh, MPEG-2, XVID, H.264, Flash, tons and tons of options. And in this drop-down, which I believe is new in the newer versions of Caden Live, you can go down to websites and select YouTube. One setting does it all for you. It uses MP4, the MPEG-4 video codec, and it uses the AAC audio codec. So if I go ahead and select that, we will tell it, put it on the desktop, in the SQL directory, and just call it test. And hit render, and there we go. It's rendering, it'll take a minute or two, and then it's done. You've got a video ready to put on YouTube. And that's really all there is to it. You install GTK Record My Desktop. I know there are some other alternatives out there. That's just the one I've had the best luck with. You run that, you make sure your settings are set appropriately, you make sure you've got the right portion of the screen selected, you open up your webcam program if you'd like to capture that, you hit record, and there you go. When you're done, you hit the stop button that's in the upper right hand corner, it encodes, you run your M encoder on it afterwards, you can use FFmpeg or something else, but M encoder is the one that I've used and had a lot of good luck with. That's all for this episode of Ask Twill. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.